Golden State Media Concepts bring you Book Review Podcast, a haven for bookworms of all ages and the widest genres from mystery to memoirs, romance to comedy, fantasy to sci fi. If you love to read, this is the podcast for you. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. Hello and welcome to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Sarah, and I hope you are having a fabulous week. It is Thursday, and that means the week is almost coming to an end, which is nice if it's been a long week, or maybe you've been having a fabulous week, and so you're like, eh, I I don't need a weekend. My week's going great. Mm, Even then, we probably still look forward to the weekend if we work one of those jobs that gives us a weekend on the same, you know, on Saturday and Sunday. Everyone's schedule is different. I'm not here to put my Monday through Friday kind of schedule on you. Nope. Anyway, I'm here to talk about books because it's a book review podcast and I love books and that's what I do. So on Tuesday, I talked about another of my favorite authors from, well, childhood, but also adulthood, uh, Roald Dahl, and said that this this episode, I would be talking about children's books as well. And you might think, you are an adult. Why do you keep talking about children's books? Well, I am an adult, um, but I was once a child, and I have children in my life of various ages. And I actually still like to read children's books because they are fun <laughs> and um, entertaining and sometimes I need that in my life. Uh, Adult books are also fun and entertaining often, but sometimes they are deeper and heavier and um, require a lot more of my personal involvement, my brain involvement, uh, everything. Children's books are usually lighter. Um, Not always. They can deal with some pretty heavy subjects, but I, I like I like to read them. And also, um, I have nieces, as I've said, who are of various ages. So I like to kind of read what they've been, what they're reading or what they might want to read at some point. And then I also have uh, a father, mother, and sister, and brother, excuse me, who also read a lot and a lot of. Uh, Ironically, not ironically, um, interestingly, a lot of my children's book recommendations come from them. Not only do they also have grandchildren and children or, and nieces and whatever, you, what what have you, that they recommend books to, but my brother and my dad read a lot of fantasy, a lot of fantasy. And so they are constantly reading and recommending all of these new young adult fantasy books and series because young adult fantasy as well adult fantasy also is almost always a series you never have a standalone fantasy book have you ever noticed that so i get a lot of recommendations from them because they are voracious readers and their category of choice their genre of choice is fantasy which often comes in the form of young adult anyway i'm also a child at heart let's just go with that <laughs> so today i will be talking about two different young adult books that i recently read the first one is uh, the second book featuring a character named Jackie Haha or Jackie Hart. Uh, that is by James Patterson and Chris Grabenstein. And that is that one is called My Life is a Joke. And then the second book is the first in a fantasy series. And that is called The Magic Thief. And the first one, My Life is a Joke, came out in October of last year. And The Magic Thief has been out for a while. I think the first one came out in, um, I'll have to look. It was either 2012 or 2014, I think. So it's been out for a while. Maybe you've already heard of it. Maybe you've already read it. But it's new to me, so that's always exciting. I also am finally starting to catch up some on my to-be-read list. And these two I got for Christmas, which is always fun. I actually got them as kind of surprises in the mail from, I don't even, no, I do remember. It was, uh, oh, I know what it was. It was a book club 
like Secret Santa kind of thing. And I got these two books. So that was awesome because you never know what you're going to get from stuff like that. So I'm finally reading them, what, six months later? Anyway, so the first book, Jackie Haha, ha, My Life is a Joke is the second book, as I said, by James Patterson and Chris Grabenstein, featuring this character, Jackie Haha. Ha. Her name is Jackie Hart, but she has a bit of a stutter, especially when she gets nervous. And in kindergarten, she was trying to say her name, Jackie Hart, and she was stuttering. And so the bully in the class made fun of her and started calling her Jackie Haha. Ha. It actually works to her advantage, though, because she is funny and she is a comedian. She loves to entertain. In the first book, she discovered that love of theater and entertaining, and there was a lot of adventure in that. She is one of seven daughters, seven girls in this family that lives um, on the Jersey Shore. That is a place that I am not familiar with. I've been there, but that's a whole culture that... Uh, growing up in Montana is very different from where my growing up experience. So it's fun to, to read about that. Uh, the books are written from the grown-up perspective, the grown-up Jackie, to her two young daughters who are around adolescent age, I believe. So she's writing to them about various things that happened to her when she was around their age, 12, 13. She was 11 in the first book. She's 12 in this book, I believe. Um, so it's from her, her adult perspective. And then the books take place in the 90s. And so she's always making jokes about, uh, you know, she'll say something about like a VHS tape and then she'll explain what that is and how you had to actually put this giant tape into a machine and you had to rewind it when it was done, etc. It's fun to um, relive some of that and also to think about the fact that I grew up with these things, but my some of my nieces grew up with these things also. Actually, my parents still have a VHS, so all of my nieces are familiar with what a VHS is and having to rewind it when you're done. But anyway, let me give you the storyline for this book, My Life is a Joke. So Jackie Hart has found a hidden talent in the performing arts, and she's a triple threat on stage. She wants nothing more, to, the more than to act all summer, but her parents have other plans for her. Jackie reluctantly signs up for a summer job in her resort town of Seaside Heights, New Jersey, where tourists come to enjoy the beach and fun carnival atmosphere. Now Jackie has serious responsibilities like her job and babysitting her younger sister, but Jackie longs to perform in the summer stock performance of A Midsummer Night's Dream. Can she handle all of her important commitments and still have fun with her friends? Or will she learn that juggling isn't one of her many talents? <laughs> so that is the premise for Jackie Haha. Ha, my life is a joke. There's lots to love about this, right? It's summer. It's the Jersey Shore. It, she comes from a big family that uh, all has their, they all have their quirks. Her youngest sister is six and pretty much doesn't ever want to eat anything but cheese pizza, which is a very six-year-old kind of trait. But they're also um, performing her, her theater, her theater teacher, uh, her drama teacher at school, excuse me that she uh, met and got to know in the first book who who encouraged her to take part in the school play helped her to um, figure out ways to work around her stutter uh, and to be able to speak in public without stuttering is now in this book and she has friends who are coming to do a, a performance of a midsummer's night's dream and encourages a lot of the kids in her drama class her drama club to audition for some of the roles the the, fa the roles of the fairy the fairies in that play so there's the midsummer night's dreams reference dream references there's also a ton of shakespeare references the teacher is always quoting shakespeare and trying to get the kids interested in shakespeare and of course they're 12 and they at first think shakespeare is just boring and then they come to have an appreciation of shakespeare uh, all the girls have to get summer jobs for various, for, uh, you know, reasons that I'm not going to totally give away. And Jackie does find a summer job. Then there is the, you know, there's, there's always the, the boy aspect. I mean, it's a family of seven girls. Two of them always seem to be crushing on the same boy in the books. And then Jackie as a 12 year old is starting to realize that she might be interested in boys as more than just friends. And that's kind of weird. Um, but then there is uh, stuff going on in the boardwalk that summer of um, 
there's theft going on and graffiti and all these things. And so there is that element of mystery in there as well. It's a lot of fun. It's really well written. It is funny. It made me giggle in places. Like I said, it made me nostalgic for, you know, not all of the 90s. Uh, there there were some things to love about the 90s. There, I miss flannel. Um, <laughs> not in the summer, though. Um, so it made me nostalgic for certain things, made me laugh at certain, uh, at lots of parts. And I enjoy this family and um, the, the first one came out in September of last year, and this one came out in October. I don't know if there's going to be more in this series. James Patterson, as you probably know, is a prolific writer. I mean, he's got a ton of books out. And so he, I, I really love that he now also writes, or maybe he always has, but he, he writes, you know, adult thriller type books, mystery type books, but he also writes middle school age books. And I really love that about that about him. I think it's great. He clearly embraces his inner child and has this series of books. It's interesting that his main character is um, a 12 year old girl, you know, uh, I, I don't want to go back to being a 12 year old girl, but um, getting into the mind of a 12 year old girl for, uh, I don't know how old James Patterson is, but for you know, an older man, it has got to be an interesting experience. So he does pretty well. Uh, and maybe because he's writing from the adult Jackie's perspective about these experiences. So he's bringing that adult perspective to the adolescent years, but it's a lot of fun. It is about a 12 year old girl and her 12 year old friends and her teenage sisters. And then she's got two younger sisters as well. But, uh, so right around that age, I would say it's, it's appropriate for, let me double check and see what age group it is recommended for Hang in there. I'm scrolling. I'm scrolling. Yeah. I'm not seeing it. Hold on. There it is. Eight to 12, <laughs> eight to 12 years, grade level three through seven. So a little younger than the characters in the book, but, um, yeah, I, I, I was thinking my 12 year old niece would probably like it. Maybe think it was a little silly, but would also like it. You know, she's at that age where she secretly likes things, but publicly rolls her eyes about them. So, um, eight, 12 grade level three through seven, I think it'd be a lot of fun to read together. If you have daughters or, um, well, heck you could read it with sons. Even I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna limit who you can read it with. So Jackie, ha ha. My life is a joke. Thought it was very fun, very cute, very sweet. And, um, there's always some crazy shenanigans that Jackie finds herself involved in. Usually they're her fault that she's involved in them, but then she has to figure out how to extricate herself from those situations. So some problem solving skills, which are always good and uh, taking some responsibility for your own actions, which is great. So some really good lessons in there as well. And some good lessons about bullying and being kind and considerate towards your friends, towards even not your friends. So definitely some good life lessons in there. I think we're going to take a break now. And when we come back, we'll move on to my second choice for this episode, which is The Magic Thief by Sarah Prineas. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Bible Study Podcast, and I'll be right back. Do you want to be healthier, yet you just don't know what to do? All these shows telling you this and that, but nothing seems to work. Well, listen close. Golden State Media Concepts has got something great for you. The health and wellness podcast dedicated to workout trends, healthy eating habits, diet, and everything about healthy living. Join us in our banters as we help you not just live life to the fullest, but live it to the healthiest. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and we are turning our attention now to The Magic Thief. As I was saying the author's name before going to break, I realized I don't know how to pronounce this, and so I said Prineas, P-R-I-N-E-A-S. But do you know what I love about the internet? 
I love that you can type in, how do I pronounce XYZ, you know, whatever word you're looking for. And nine times out of 10, you will get a recording of how to pronounce that word. So I typed in, how do you pronounce Prineas? Um, and P-R-I-N-E-A-S, just in case you're curious. And got a recording of the author herself saying how to pronounce her name. And she says it is Prineas. It is Greek. And actually in Greece, they would pronounce it Prineas. But when her husband's family emigrated, they, they changed it to Prineas. So her name is Sarah Prineas. Uh, in Greek, it means primrose. So see what you learn when you type things in to how, you know, Google as to how you pronounce things. I love stuff like that. I love learning about names and what they mean and how they can be pronounced in different ways. So I am maybe just a dork, but also she has a really good first name and it's spelled right with an H. So <laughs> let's talk about the book and not about the author's name first and or last. The book, as I said, is The Magic Thief. It is the first in a series. There are four. Um, the, they're all called The Magic Thief. The first one is just The Magic Thief. And then the second is The Magic Thief with a subtitle of Lost and then a subtitle of Found and then a subtitle of home. So four that I am aware of when I looked up the series. As I said, I got this book for Christmas and just finally got around to reading it. Haven't had a chance to read the other books yet, but want to now that I have read the first one. Um, this is, I said that I thought it was written in maybe 2012 or 2014, and I was very wrong because this first one was actually published in 2009. So I am really behind the curve on this one. You're probably thinking, yeah, pff, I read that 10 years ago, whatever. <laughs> so anyway, this is a book about uh, a young boy named Khan. He's not quite sure when he was born, so not quite sure what age he is. He is uh, what they call a gutter boy at the beginning. And the book starts with him. He's a pickpocket and a lock pick. And so in the beginning of the book, he is hungry and trying to figure out where he's going to get dinner when he encounters a, an older man and picks his pocket. And then adventure goes from there. So here is the description of The Magic Thief by Sarah Prinius. In a city that runs on a dwindling supply of magic, a young boy is drawn into a life of wizardry and adventure. Khan should have dropped dead the day he picked Neveri's pocket and touched the wizard's Locus Magicalicus, a stone used to focus magic and work spells. But for some reason, he did not. Neveri finds that interesting, and he takes Khan, at, on, takes Khan as his apprentice on the provision that the boy find a Locus stone of his own. But Khan has little time to search for his stone between wizard lessons and helping Neveri, who discover who or what is stealing the city of Wellmet's magic. A lot of very typical um, fantasy elements in this description. You have a young boy or, you know, a young person. In this case, it happens to be a young boy who seems to come from nothing or very unassuming beginnings. As I said, he's a gutter boy. He lives on the street. He makes his what living he can as a pickpocket and a lockpick. Um, but he obviously is more than that because he tries to steal what is called a locus magicalicus. That is the, the focusing stone that focuses magic for a wizard and should have killed him when he, he, he stole it, but it didn't. So there's more to this boy than meets the eye. And there's more to this boy that meets the eye on a couple of levels. But that is for you to find out when you read this book. And the the tagline for the book is take the magic and run, <laughs> which is fun. So he comes into this relationship with a certain set of skills, unlike not unlike Liam Neeson. Um, <laughs> sorry. And it's interesting because, he, you know, he has a very specific life growing up on the street. It's, it's made him into the person that he is. He could have been very, very hard. In some, way he, some ways, he's um, very, very familiar with the world and what goes on in the world. And in other ways, he's very naive about the world and very innocent about the world. So that gives him a unique and interesting outlook, which I liked. 
Nevery is a very crotchety, very grumpy old man. And you actually get most of the book is from Khan's perspective, told in the first person. But then there are between chapters, um, there are entries in Nevery's diary or journal or um, whatever you would want to call it. Maybe it's his grimoire. I don't know. And this, so then you get things from his perspective, which is very uh, grumpy <laughs> and curmudgeonly. He, he, uh, he's, he's very short of patience. He doesn't really want an apprentice. He doesn't want to take the time to teach an apprentice. But their relationship is interesting because never he, you know, he takes him on because he's interested in him, but he doesn't really want an apprentice, um, but wants to find out more about why this young boy took his locus magicalicus and it didn't kill him. And then, so he takes him on first as a servant, then as an apprentice and expects him to show him proper respect by calling him master. And Khan refuses and just calls him Nevery. And that is very, very un, um, unusual and not appropriate. But what he says to Nevery, because Nevery explains it to him, you should, you should use that term as a sign of respect because I am your teacher and I know things that you don't and I will teach those things to you. And Khan says, well, I know things that you don't and I could teach you. And so they develop this relationship. It's not exactly equal, but they teach each other. So Khan says, well, I'll teach you how to pick pockets and pick locks and you teach me magic. Very interesting. See, he's, you know, he's got a very unique perspective on the world that's both a little idealistic, a little naive, but also kind of mature and um, grown up. And he sees things that other people don't necessarily see. So when they're trying to figure out what is causing the city's supply of magic to dwindle, he sees things that, you know, his mind is a lot more open than Nevery's is as his grumpy old curmudgeonly self. And so he sees things and um, kind of intuits things that don't seem realistic. So we get this introduction. He's still got a lot more to learn. And so I'm, I'm very eager to continue reading the series, see what happens to Khan next, see where he's going to go, what he's going to learn, what adventures he gets into. He does start going to um, magic school. <laughs> what's fantasy? What's a, what's a magic fantasy book without a good fantasy or magic school, right? Where he meets a young girl who is helping tutor him because he doesn't know how to read. So it makes it difficult to just jump into school when you haven't learned to read. And of course they become friends and it turns out that she is someone very interesting and her family plays an important role in the book as well. Uh, so you get that element of friends and then uh, also unlikely friends or maybe even a frenemy, if you will, you, you get some of that in the book. There are other, um, magicians or wizards. There are other apprentices that also go to this school. And so you get an, uh, an idea of how life works in this world and how those relationships are very, very different from the relationship that Khan and Nevery develop. So a lot of fun, very, very sweetly written. Um, like I said, I, I really liked Khan and watching his unique perspective on the world. Uh, there is also, I just love that the characters, you know, you get your, your kind of typical characters, never is sort of curmudgeonly and you get the, the bad guy characters who are, you know, they're, they're bad guys. So they do the bad stuff. And Khan is a little, a little unique, but then there's also, there's also Bennett who is Nevery's bodyguard, but he also, uh, cooks. He's their cook and he also knits. I love that. Awesome. He's this big hulking, grumpy, glaring man who can definitely take care of business, but he also knits. Nothing wrong with that. And he cooks a mean biscuit. So, hey, I love that. I, I just love that there are depth to these characters and it's written with warmth and humor and very engaging. I, it's a children's book, so I read it in one sitting. I just sat down and read it um, a couple nights ago and loved it and looking forward to reading the next ones. Have already put them on hold at my library. Oh, um, so this is about the same age range as the first book we talked about, about my life is a joke. Um, Amazon says age range eight to 12 years and grade level is 
five to six, fifth through six. Eight is a little young to be in fifth grade, but you know, if you have a precocious eight-year-old, there are some, as with as with most fantasy books, there are some words that are multi-syllabic, so might be a little hard to sound out. But you know, if you've got uh, younger children who are proficient readers and who like to sound out words like that, then not a problem. Maybe that's what they mean by eight to twelve, and fifth to sixth grade. But you know your children, you know their reading likes and dislikes, you know their reading levels, etc. Or if you should read it as a family, then obviously you know what they like to listen to and you can figure out how to pronounce those words or have them read it to you and then you can all pronounce, figure out how to pronounce them together. Yes. Anyway, so two books, two children's books from me, a child at heart who does love to read children's books in the midst of reading all the other books that she reads. So that is my take on both My Life is a Joke and The Magic Thief. So thank you so much for joining me. I hope you will join me again next time on Tuesday when we have another new episode. In the meantime, have yourself a really wonderful weekend and I hope that part of that weekend involves you going out and getting lost in a good book. Thank you. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music, from sports, to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.